Welcome everyone to the workshop formally so that we can now start um, finally. Now, um, people who have participated in workshops before, they know that I have a very unique method of teaching which emphasizes the participation of the participants and not only one-sided teaching. That means during this workshop, you're going to be doing a lot of role playing and learning things by doing hands on practice. Now, before we go right into our agenda for day one, um, let's quickly have an introduction of everyone who has joined the workshop. Um, we can start with Anam Shafiq first. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Anam. All right, thank you so much. Um, then we have Soleha Javed, I'm unmuting you. I'm sorry, yes, Solia, you were cut in between. All right, thank you so much. And then we have Azim. I usually it takes a little bit before you get unmuted. So I'm trying to unmute you, Azim. Okay, I think he's left. Um, so we can continue with Sarah Chaudhry. Sarah, is your mic working? Okay, it doesn't seem to be working, no problem. Um, so thank you very much for your brief introductions, everyone. Um, it's nice to see a good mix between students and um, professors both. Um, so we have a very interactive um, session, hopefully, in which you're going to be able to help each other uh, from different perspectives. Um, predominantly, I think we have people from psychology. Um, I know a couple of you are from a different field, but that's good in general, because then we can have uh, different approaches and to different problems. So um, kicking off our um, agenda for um, today, uh, what we're going to do is that um, we're going to be looking into um, some of the principles of uh, academic writing, um, starting with what are you going to get through this workshop. Um, so before you start, you want to know uh, what is that you're going to be learning um, through this workshop. And much of it is based on my previous experience, um, my PhD students that I'm supervising and undergraduate queries all around the world. Um, so if you have international participation um, and I keep getting different queries that I would like to address in the workshop to make sure that, you know, I resolve at least these repetitive questions so that they do not 
show up as often as they do. Um, so first of all, there are no prerequisites um, of any knowledge uh, for academic writing. In this course, you do not need to know anything about academic writing. If you don't know anything, it's fine because I'm going to take you from the start and I'm going to walk you through step by step in a very easy and visual manner so that you could understand the process of academic writing. Some of you might have written papers and others uh, might not have done that. That's no problem at all. I'm going to walk you through from the get-go. Um, also, the tools that I will be using uh, are based on the problems that I experience a lot with students. And I keep getting these questions. Many of um, them have to do with the grammar. Some of them have to do with syntax. Um, others have to do with literature review, and how to format your paper into APA style, and very common queries that can easily be resolved. So I'm basing off of the top frequently asked questions that have been asked from me, and I'm going to try to address that. Um, at any point in the workshop, if you have any question, um, you can feel free to ask. You can chat. You can um, ask yourself um, to unmute. You actually, I'm going to go ahead and give you the option to unmute yourself. So you can unmute yourself and interrupt me um, anytime you want. I want you to take something out of this workshop. Um, it's not about me teaching everything and expecting that you're going to learn on your own. We're going to actually demonstrate that, and we're going to work together to make sure that you understand it on a conceptual level. Um, and then we will also learn to write a complete uh, research paper, um, or at least we're going to attempt to write it. Um, definitely it's not going to be something original, um, but we're going to actually make the headings for different portions in an APA style paper. I have already shared a template in WhatsApp group for how APA paper is supposed to look like. Um, how tables and figures should be formatted, what should be the line spacing. Um, so I've already given you a free template in the WhatsApp group. So people who have not yet seen that, please um, go to your WhatsApp group and download that um, APA format template that I've sent you. Um, also, the book that we're going to be using um, is already in the group. Um, and when we're going to get to that point, I'm going to explain it to you what portion to look into. Um, the good part of this workshop is that uh, some of the tools, um, the latest research tools in English grammatical um, softwares that most people do not know at this point, or at least in my experience, they're not as used as they should be. I'm going to be talking about these tools in this workshop. Um, so most of us are English speakers as um, second language. So our sec mother tongue is not English. So it's, it can be a huge problem when we're trying to submit to international journals where we have to make sure that our research is not only grammatically correct, but it's also scientific and it uses vocabulary and its fluency. It is as, at least at the same level um, as your competitors who are going to submit to the same journal. And I've seen so many rejections just based on the grammatic and uh, syntactic problems. So I'm going to issue uh, talk about these tools that you can use in your writing to make sure that your writing is a lot better than others. Um, also, we're going to be doing the interactive participation. That means that after I'm done telling you about um, tools and writing and tricks, you have to share your screen and actually show me what you have learned. Um, and if there's something you're confused about, don't worry at all. Um, everyone make mistakes. Um, it's not the end of it. So I'm going to help you to navigate to how you have to actually use that feature that we're talking about. So don't worry about that. It's a hands-on workshop. Um, unlike others, I just do not stand there and give you long lectures. I want to make it more role-based. I want to make it more fun and interactive where you actually take something out of the workshop. Now, what you'll get is also a workshop participation certificate at, at the end of the workshop, certifying that you have taken the course, you have learned these tools, and you have uh, spent time. In some situations, you could use these certificates to get credits, university credits, if that's possible in university or in school. Um, you can also display that in your LinkedIn resumes um, or research kit profiles and, and other places. Um, so that's something you're going to get also. 
Um, you will also learn how to find right journals for your papers in which you can submit your manuscripts and make sure that the chances of your papers getting accepted are the highest um, because sometimes you have written a wonderful paper um, it's groundbreaking work but you do not know where to submit that and just because it's not relevant to the journal it gets rejected um, and that causes a lot of disappointment so we're going to address that problem also how do we find the right journals to publish in and what can we do to make sure that our paper gets accepted generally there is a time from submission to acceptance um, and it varies from different journals um, mostly quarter one journals can take up to months to respond uh, and others might take some weeks but you know it differs uh, it differs from journal to journal and we're going to be talking about that also um, also for your convenience the workshop will be recorded for only the members of this group so you will have unlimited access to the recording that um, will be done for this session um, in highest quality um, so you can watch this video in your own free time uh, and at your own pace without any problems at all uh, if there are other friends and families or colleagues who would like to watch this recording they can also access that um, after the payment for um, the registration that you guys have paid so make it fair that you know since you have paid you know everyone else gets to share this um, if they pay also um, then we also have shared the template for AP style research paper. I assume most of the people here are from the psychology discipline, but if not, um, there are other styles, which are Chicago and Vancouver and MLA. And uh, upon request, I can give you a template for these uh, papers also. That's not a problem at all. Just feel free to send me a message and I'll be more than happy to help you. Now, uh, I'm also going to be sharing the literature review template for people who have actually um, joined our workshops in the past. They have this literature review template, but for the new people, I'll send you the literature review template to make sure that you get the literature review Excel file in which you can make literature review of all the papers that you have collected in order to find the research gap. Um, if you're interested, we have um, full-scale long workshops on NVivo, which was, I think, three days, and on SPSS, we have five days. Um, it also partially covers EndNote um, and how to add citations to Microsoft Word. And these things um, can be found in our workshops, so you can buy our recordings for the workshop also, uh, and that would be a lot more helpful um, than only the literature review template. Um, Sarah, I can also share the IEEE format for the computer sciences. That's not a problem at all. I have a template and uh, just remind me after the workshop and you can contact uh, Musama um, and you know, we can get you these templates. Now, um, by participating into this workshop, you have uh, joined our exclusive Facebook uh, and WhatsApp community. We also have Google Classroom. Uh, where we upload our materials uh, for things. So there are numerous benefits of joining this particular circle. First is that you get specific discounts on um, our future workshops in comparison to other people who are not. And then we put you into our active Facebook and WhatsApp group and you register. Um, you also get unlimited reviews of your uh, preliminary writing. Um, people who have joined the workshop before they know we also did a Facebook live session last week in which I take your questions about your research and be it on the initial stage or if you're already collecting data or doing the analysis I'd be more than happy to help you with that so I'll review um, the work um, and that's only restricted to people in these groups um, my personal circles um, so don't announce all the hundred friends of yours um, to have free reviews, that's only for you guys um, because you have been um, in this group. Um, you also get a detailed review of one large writing project. So if you're writing your master's thesis or your um, PhD thesis or MPhil thesis, whatever it be, so once you're done, you can uh, send it to me for um, your proofreading or editing or any um, consultation you wanted. Um, 
you if you have any queries about that i'd be more than happy to do one large uh, writing project and uh, review um uh, if i have time for that you also are eligible for um, a 60 minute um session on one to hour one to one hour in which you would be directly talking to me about your research um so it could be about your data collection it could be your hypothesis forming it could be the analysis that is appropriate for the kind of data that you're collecting it could be anything um, so I offer um, appointments for people only in this group uh, and that's exclusive for the members that I have now with that said um, let's actually get to the tools that we will be using today and we're going to be learning about these tools um, once again a reminder um, if you have any question at any point feel free to ask uh, no need to be shy um, there's always a beginning point no questions are dumb enough um, you can ask any questions um, there was a point when I didn't know any any of these things and um, I did ask these questions without any shame and you know and ended up learning something at least enough to teach it to other people who would need that. So make sure that you do ask these questions. So first of all things is, it's a very common question, where do we actually find the information that we're looking for? Um, most people in Pakistan, they do not have the access to expensive databases like Web of Science, which is the premier database for the research papers that we have. So we generally have Google Scholar, um, or you can find um, other papers. So I wanted to share some of those um, resources that you could actually use for the, where you can find your resources. So let me go ahead and actually share the screen where you could see the browsers. So first of the tools, um, can everyone see the new screen? All right, perfect. So first of the thing you're going to do is, and that's the most common one, so I hope that most people would actually know that, um, it's the Google Scholar. So if you're looking for a research paper that is um, easily accessible and it's available online for free, uh, you simply go to scholar.google.com and this should be the point of search for, the initial point of search for any of your research. So if we're gonna go ahead and see academic writing research papers and you can also choose between articles and case laws um, so once you do that you have this screen in front of you where you have different results from the keyword academic writing so you can see that there's uh, over 4.5 million results uh, delivered in less than five seconds and case laws are basically uh, for the legal services. So if you're looking for some precedent in uh, court litigation, you would use that. That's basically for lawyers. So that is not for you. Also, a quick reminder that um, the um, Zoom free meetings um, is only valid for 40 minutes. So we have nine minutes and then you will rejoin the meeting. We're going to be posting the link into the WhatsApp group and you can rejoin mooting and we're going to start from there we still have nine minutes just wanted to give you a heads up yes sir you can do the patterns also and i'm not going to be showing that in this workshop because um that's from a different field but you certainly can do that there's another website um i believe it's the u.s uh, um, attorney website um, where you could actually search for the updated patterns but you can do a quick Google search to find that now uh, back to the results so we have the academic re writing results where you can see different uh, papers that are available so we have books available and then we also have different papers here that's published in applied linguistic 2004 and that's the academic dot oxford university press um, where you can do that so you can open the papers uh, sometimes it's going to take you to a different website sometimes it's going to show you the abstract um, so mostly when you're searching for papers on a preliminary stage 
um, and you do not have access to premium databases now you can go ahead and actually search from that so now here you have the um, abstract of the paper like you see in front of you um, but the problem is that um, you cannot actually have the full access to the paper if you do not have an Oxford academic account um, and at that point most of the people would um, get stuck and they don't know where to go about that so let's address this problem shortly but before we do let us let me show you some other features so on the left side to answer the questions you can um, search for patterns by checking the box and you can also include the citations now if you want to sort out all these results um, because as a rule in economic publishing you use the latest research on your topic uh, to make sure that it's updated so you can sort it, um, your results by date also and now you see it's um, sorted by the latest paper which is like two days ago so that's as recent as you can get it um, so two days after the book is published so you can have that um, and then we have some Swedish results um, and then some German results and everything so um, in general the point was that you can access as many um, latest research papers as you can now um, if you want a certain range for example if your professor tells you to um, cite papers that are only um, four years old so let's say it's since 2016 so you can add since 2016 in here and then you will have papers that are um, published after 2016 or in 2016 so now that you have the latest um, research papers you can simply cite that in your paper um, and you'll have fulfill the requirement for that now if you have a different range you can write a different range here so you can start from 2008 and you can search that and then you will have a range from 2008 onwards like you see the first result is by 2008 okay now uh, back to our problem uh, about the paper that we cannot find now in most cases uh, papers that you cannot access um, through Google Scholar because they're not freely available you can simply copy them if you have a wonderful tool um, I think I've shared a post about uh, this website of SciHub which is the largest tool for uh, finding academic papers um, if you do not have access to that um, so what you can do is you can go to the SciHub and you can add the name of your paper you can also add the URL where the paper is find or there's something called a DOI that is unique identifier for that specific research and you can find that so you just paste the name of your article and if it's available on SciHub it's going to show you and that's the girl um, who actually created SciHub her name is Alexandra she's from Kazakhstan and she's one of the top 10 most influential scientists um, that have changed the trajectory of science um, so good to know that uh, so once you have that uh, what you can do is that you can uh, not only read the paper you can download that and you can cite that now uh, one thing that I skipped uh, when I was telling you about Google Scholar is that once you have read the paper and you want to cite that um, how do you use uh, a software where you can actually um, import the citation in for example in my case that would have been the Google uh, it's going to be the EndNote so once you have the EndNote here uh, you're simply going to go ahead and import it by pressing citations icon here and then import it to EndNote and when you do that it's going to download a file in which it's going to um, add uh, your citation into your EndNote software and then from there on you can um, insert that now um, that being done uh, you're also searched uh, you've also searched for the paper they could not find in Google Scholar in SciHub and you have downloaded that so one part of that is done now uh, the problem is that if you want to search for a book um, what do you do about that now there's an alternative for that and that is called the library Genesis which is a sister project of SciHub uh, they're more or less the uh, same thing um, so you can go to the libgen.is 
and uh, some of the times because of the copyright restrictions uh, it keeps changing so you can go to Wikipedia to find the original links Um, sorry, it's not mandatory for you to use EndNote. If you want to use free softwares like Mendeley and Zotero, you can do that. Um, I find EndNote personally easy, so it's easy for me. But if you want to learn about Zotero and uh, Mendeley, um, that there are so many tutorials online, and they work pretty much the same way um, the EndNote does. Um, so that's a personal choice. If you want to use that, you can do that. Um, if you're technically very good, uh, if your IT skills are superb, you can also use um, the free version um, which is called the latex and you can also format your uh, citation in latex um, it depends on you so back to our library genesis project so if you want to search for scientific articles you can press scientific articles uh, if you're searching for books fiction comics uh, magazines you can do that uh, now once you are here you can simply write the name of a book if you want to have that for example let's say we want to search for Lord of the Rings. Let's see what we have uh, in fiction here. So there you go. We have all forms of Lord of the Rings um, in an archive form, e-publication, movie form. We also have text. Uh, you can simply download it from different emitters. And there's, there are so many things that you can do. Um, and you can, you can search the kind of uh, material that you're looking for. Now, I think we're uh, pretty much done here. But there, are, what about different versions of different books? Um, so for that, one of the websites that I find very helpful is the WordCat. Uh, WordCat is um, a union catalog and it has over 18,000 records uh, as of now um, and what it does is that it um, participates by giving the information on the books and its different versions um, along with their ISBN numbers on the website uh, so when you go to the website you see this interface where you have the f uh, first page that gives you the options to search um, everything either books dvds cds articles anything so you can do that here also um so here if you want to search for a book on genetic mutation so there we have different results from um, genetic mutation so you see we have the video form of that also that includes the clip art, images, graphics, um, and uh, you also have the information about the publisher of the book. Um, then we also have the ebook, uh, the author, and you also can see different formats and languages. Um, you can drill down your results based. All right, I guess we have everyone back now. Uh, welcome back. So uh, I was telling you ab about uh, the book titles um, and how to drill down different options from your search so if you only want book chapters you can uh, press chapters and you will have um, the results from that um, if you want to make sure that you have you want to have the material that is downloadable you can go ahead and do that so there are so many options you can do, do that um, you can select the authors and the year uh, the language and so many things it's a, one of the best tools if you want to do the citations for the book especially when there are different versions of that so the book that we're going to be using today about um, the writing manual, uh, it has, I think, nine versions. Um, so if you want to cite that in your paper, it becomes a little hard for you to actually know what book you're citing because when you search on Google Scholar, it might have the book, but it might not have the right edition. So you, just to make sure that you have the right um, book with the right version, you simply go there and do that. Now, um, one additional tip that I can give you about that is that um, you can simply go there and um, see the book. Um, you can also see the full text if that's available here uh, press by pressing that. Um, 
so what you want to do is if you want to import the citation is you press cite export and then it's going to give you different options on what style you want to add to the reference manager that you're using and then it gives you different options for refresh if you're using that um, endnote um, easybib and different options so you can import that um, in your research paper and then you can go from there I'm sorry your reference manager so uh, that was it for um, the book part now finally what if you want to do search for something um, that is latest um, and it comes from a repeatable institution um, so I can give you a simple example on um, how do you actually find the thesis work uh, that different people have done um, by going to um, the Stanford thesis repository um, so what you can do is Stanford has its own thesis database that you can search and it's called search works so here you can find all the theses and dissertations um, by any student in Stanford um, or any school or department that they have um, so they have different um, department that you can drill down into so for example if you were to go to the Department of Psychology and just press that and it shows that it has almost 282 catalog results um, so let's go ahead and actually review it, um, filter it down for the most recent So we have this expansive care theory um, and then we have the inner subject variability of ventral visual cortex um, that has to do more with clinical psychology. Um, so we have all these papers. So if you find something um, that is relevant to your research um, and you want to search it on Stanford thesis, you can do that. Um, I believe there are similar versions for MIT um, and Harvard also, but you would have to do a quick Google search for that uh, because that would be beyond the scope of this workshop to actually go into all um, Ivy League universities and find their th uh, thesis libraries. But that was an overview of um, the tools that you can use to find the resources uh, for your research paper. Um, and you cannot imagine how many questions I get from our students complaining about the lack of databases um, where they can find free research for that. Um, and I keep telling them about these resources that finding good research in these times is not very hard. Um, there are groups, there are uh, people, um, there is Sci-Hub, there is LibGenesis. You can find pretty much anything that you want for free. Um, so the quality of your work um, does not accept the excuse that you could not find that. You have most of the mater materials that you need. Um, now, um, for the professional version, I can tell you what most people use around the world, um, and I have access to that also. It's called Web of Science. Um, um, I hope that your institution has that, um, because that's the industry standard for um, searching database, it could, because it puts everything into uh, one place. and. I'll show you how easy that is to use um, because not only it gives you the research papers, it also gives you all the citations in the research paper and the full text that it has. Um, so I have um, access to that uh, through my university abroad. Um, so I can show you how easy that is to actually do systematic review papers and thematic analysis papers through that because it gives you not only access to the papers itself and all the citations in the paper, but it also gives you the search result export that you can then drill down um, for your systematic review. So this is how the interface looks like. Um, so for example, my field is personality psychology um, and business psychology. So if I'm gonna go ahead and find some video on, um, let's say the big five model of personality.
Um, Web of Science is a database just like Google Scholar, um, but that's a paid database and that's the largest database of the research papers um, with a lot of tools and Sara. So you can uh, search more about that online. Um, so now you see, uh, not only it gives you the results of the page, um, it gives you a ton of options. Um, so you can see how many times a paper is cited, um, how many times it's been used, the relevance. Um, it also tells you how to refine your results within your results. Um, now most professors would ask you to cite papers that are highly cited and reputable in the field. So you can drill down your results by press and pressing check in the checkbox uh, to find the highly cited and the hot papers and the open access papers. And then they have the publication year listed with that, different categories of um, the um, personality psychology field, psycho uh, social psychology, and maybe clinical psychology, and so many things you can do. Uh, you can search for articles and preceding papers, review. Um, then we have different organizations. If you are, want to search within an organization and its publication, you can do that. Um, Azim, the Web of Science is um, a very expensive subscription that is mostly done through your university, um, but you can get an individual account also. Um, so you can contact me after the workshop um, because we have some business accounts, um, shared accounts that we could use for that, um, and we can get one for you also. Um, and we also have um, the business uh, subscriptions for some other tools that we're going to be talking about shortly um, you can contact uh, musama or me after the workshop uh, so we can get you an account now with that said uh, the last thing before we go ahead that i want to show you is how easy it is to actually not only do the uh, read the full text but also do the snowball literature review by adding different uh, articles so you see when the paper is um, open you can see their authors and you can click their authors to actually um, read all the papers by that specific author um, you can see the abstract and all the normal things but what's interesting is that how many papers does this paper uh, actually cite and with all these papers you can actually go ahead and uh, read the same papers within the web of science so normally what happens is that you have a research paper and then you have papers and citations in the re references or bibliography session and you have to manually go ahead and search for these papers uh, in web of science everything is already in the end of that paper so you simply have to click the link and go to the next paper um, there's some um, relatively new or old papers that are not indexed but that you can easily find through sci-hub if that's available online which is just a fantastic tool to actually um, do the literature review it makes your work so much easier now um, there are other free tools uh, to learn things um, that I wanted to tell you and one of uh, them is the um, MIT coursework. Um, I assume that most of you would actually know about that. Um, if not, that's the free coursework um, that MIT has graciously put, in, has put on their website for people um, in remote areas um, to actually learn from that. And you can find a lot of courses there. Um, and, and you can you know learn from that and they have included videos and different uh, presentations and other things so if I like to go and find a course in psychology I think one of the favorite courses that I have is um, the psychology 101 in that uh, especially the psychopathology lecture on that is very interesting um, so here you can find the um, course that you're looking for um, in open courseware and then it will it's going to give you the list of all the courses uh, that you would find interesting and then you can uh, go on and keep drilling your search and you can do that um, so the purpose of um, online education is that I want to spend a minute on explaining why um, I personally have used um, online learning a lot in my life and you know I I strongly believe that university education level has gone down um, over the past years. Um, the amount of work and passion people put into teaching and learning at universities um, has reasonably been outsmarted by online teaching. 
um, that means that a lot of people would actually use online courses instead of um, universities. Universities have only been producing uh, people with um, degrees um, that are not as competitive as other people who have learned things by self-learning and are passionate about that. So if you compare the average cost of um, semester in a university, and many of you are students and other are professors, so you know that for sure, that it's very expensive um, per semester and then uh, other costs of books and transportation. And you can learn the same thing online by the best professors um, around the globe um, through online teaching where you can get all the materials, um, you can do the exercises and so many other things. And this is one of the benefits of places like MIT Open Courseware and Udemy courses and interactive one-on-one -on -one courses like this one um, so that we could actually um, learn things that we would normally not learn in university. Also, the class environment is not very conducive to learning. And that has been proven by research for so long that um, now social scientists do not dispute this point that you know utility of university has been eroded uh, for a long time now. So I, for someone who is very passionate about education and has been um, one of the founders of Wikipedia in Pakistan, I strongly believe that you know these websites like MIT Open Courseware um, and Udemy and Coursera, you know, they they provide you all the things that you actually need to excel in your field. Um, Sorry, there are multiple courses you can uh, find online on Udemy also. Um, you can also search some uh, courses in Coursera. Uh, you can find free courses here on uh, MIT Open Courseware. Um, I find them very useful um, only if you your language skills are uh, superior because many of these courses require a high level of English proficiency and uh, at some point you would need one-to-one -one interaction with the teacher also. Uh, because uh, you cannot learn everything from books and videos unless you discuss it with them or there is someone who t reviews your uh, work and grades them uh, because if that were the case there would be no need need, need for teaching at all uh, but you know you can start from a mighty open course where if you believe that you have the strong skills that are required for that now um, that would be my last uh, point for the tools section that we have. Um, let's go back to our presentation and show you what we're going to cover now um, after that. Now remember, keep all these things in mind because we're going to be going um, ahead and actually putting you into the driver's seat very soon and um, explain to you what we're going to be um, learning and you have to demonstrate what you've learned so far. Now, um, this um, has been the standard book uh, on the research writing papers, dissertation, thesis, analysis uh, for so long that now it's, I think it's ninth, ninth edition. I mean, this one is the last year's edition also, I think. Um, and that's um, in honor of the professor who actually first wrote that. I think that was back in 30s, um, the Kate uh, Durabian book. and. Uh, people who have studied in universities abroad, they know this book as the standard book for um, all problems solved in one. Uh, so that's um, the book that we're going to be using also. Um, it, it has a very nice um, interface that actually tells you and walks you through all the steps of research uh, one by one. Um, you can download it through one of the tools that I showed you, Libgenesis or um, the Sci-Hub website and um, you can read that. I've also shared that in the WhatsApp group, so you can go ahead and actually um, download these things uh, if you want. Um, sorry, that's a very good question actually, and unfortunately there is no easy way to go about that. Um, if you do not know the basics of English, you have to start back to the high school level English where you have to learn about the vocabulary, the structure, the syntax, the grammar, uh, punctuation, um, verb, noun, agreement, um, and a lot of other rules. Um, and that would fall more into the general English um, criteria. Now, um, people who have joined this workshop and in general the students that I teach, um, it's an assumption that their English is at least at the IELTS 5.5 level um, or above 85 um, on TOEFL IBT. 
Um, so if you have a score below than that, um, then that becomes a problem for your um, research writing and um, you, you're you considered to not have met the prerequisites to join the workshops uh, or write a research paper. Um, now, sadly, in Pakistan, uh, university graduates are most of them, or let's say around 60% um, of them um, do not have these skills. So we have to brush on them also. And I'm going to be talking about the tools that you could actually use to uh, improve these skills uh, without having to spend another semester or even years to actually get to that point. Uh, now, the tools that I'm going to be using, uh, they're very accessible. And you can actually use them um, online and you can rest assured that m most of your writing has been um, proof read because um, most of us are English speakers um, with English is our second language so these problems arise uh, consistently not only for us but um, all people um, who are from subcontinent or let's say um, Far East in Japan South Korea I work with a lot of those people um, and even if you are a native uh, speaker, academic writing is a different niche. You have to be very scientific and you have to be very careful about your vocabulary and syntax. Um, so that's something that you would always need to learn. Uh, one good starting point um, for a research paper is this book that I'm referring to. Um, so Kate Raven is one of the pioneers of uh, the books. Uh, basically, she focuses on um, Chicago style for students and researchers. Um, but what makes her book um, so prolific and everlasting is that um, she takes things from the very beginning about what research is and how researchers think about it. Um, so, And then she starts helping you with the question formulation and different topics and they propose some working answers and things like this. So it's a very story-like book and that you can enjoy reading as a fiction also but you can also um, be riveted by the simplicity in which the book has been written um, and it makes you um, wonder how easy that is to write research papers so with that said um, let's get into academic writing and research now um, if I have not already made it clear, the first day of the workshop today is going to be about uh, the tools that we actually use for academic writing and research. Um, we have studied about free resources where we could download the books and research papers and thesis and articles um, for our research work so that we have enough materials so that when we do our literature review, we have plenty of things to actually uh, learn about. Um, and in the second uh, day of workshop, we're going to be studying about the mm, right journal for your papers, how to sub uh, sub um, submit your manuscripts, um, how to proofread your manuscript, what are the guidelines for your manuscripts, um, what are the things that can improve your chances of getting published, and what are different quartiles for different journals. So um, this is what I'm going to be saving for uh, tomorrow. So. Today, let's talk about some of the things um, that we will be um, addressing as part of academic writing. The first is uh, find a question in your topic, because if you've chosen a topic, if that's something that you're interested in, you're passionate about that, um, you have a background in that, um, or if, even if you do not have a background that has fascinated you for a long time and you're passionate about that, um, you have a topic but how do you find a question that requires your attention and the hard work that you're willing to put now um, question always arises in an empty space that means that if there's already research on that if you have enough evidence for the question that you have in your mind already out there there is no need to do research so if there is a question, uh, you need to make sure that there is there are no answers already there. And that is the purpose of your literature review. So if your literature review suggests that there are empty gaps in this field and no one has addressed those gaps, um, and you have a better strategy in comparison to others to address those gaps, go ahead and do that. And that would become your um, question once you're 
sure that um, the research gap does exist. And finding a question um, can be very problematic for many students because they either have not, in my experience, um, searched thoroughly for the answers and you know they become very satisfied with um, the skimmed results um, that they have elicited from number of research papers they have done um, or they are overexcited about and biased about the topic that they're writing about without knowing that it does it won't have an impact now unfortunately uh, many students here they just write their research to pass their exams they got a MPhil or doctoral title um, which it, I have nothing against except the fact that if you cannot justify your knowledge and if you cannot demonstrate your passion about that because that's something you're going to be taking to your students once you have those titles um, then it's not a very um, nice thing to do and it's it's not a worthwhile effort so this is why the quality of education has gone down across the academia that uh, people are writing and publishing for the sake of doing that now the second thing is um, you have to propose some working answers and uh, so once you have the question in your mind think about what could be the possible answers that you can think of um, so let's assume if you're um, searching for um, a certain um, psychopathology let's say borderline disorder and you have found out that there is no research that has been, that has been done on this uh, specific disorder um, in your population and that would make a very good um, research if you actually did that and that would contribute into our global understanding of borderline personality disorder um, so now that you have that um, it's not only enough that you have the question um, you should find the answers on why do you think that's happening and if there is enough number of people um, who are being victimized by this disorder um, is it justifiable to even conduct a research on that and why do you think that it's happening so you sh already sh should have both the question and uh, some answers for your hypothesized question now once you have this question um, what you do is that you build a storyboard to plan and guide your work now let's get back to our example and uh, feel free to ask any questions if you have any research question in your mind about your own research um, we're going to be um, looking at and s see how we can actually apply the same theme uh, of finding a question proposing some working answers and building a story around that so now what you have to do is that once you have the disorder in your mind you have the working reasons for that you have to find out how to actually confirm that your answers are right um, and if the results are against um, that hypothesis um, what would that mean that your hypothesis is rejected um, so we have type 1 and type 2 errors for that um, but we're not going to go into deep into that the purpose of um, the storyboard is to actually lay out a plan that you can put in front of your supervisor um, or your colleagues if you're writing a research paper to tell them where are we heading with that um, so if you go out from your house to buy something you at least have in your mind what you're going to buy and where are you going to go to do that um, research is no different if you want to conduct a research you should be very clear in your mind what are you looking for um, is it the association between different variables that you're looking for or do you want to classify different variables or different objects into different um, pieces or you want to make a predictive analysis on um, the data that you already have what is that exactly that you want to do so in research um, this is uh, probably the holy grail that people have been trying to find answer for such a long time that where do you actually go with all the questions in your mind so you have to be absolutely clear what you want to do you cannot change your horses midstream and um, think that you're going to survive that um, you have to be very clear from the beginning now um, writing is a very tedious and long process and there's going to be a lot of rejection there's going to be a lot of um, questioning and criticism um, and that should not deter you because research is not for the faint-hearted that means that you know you have to be very objective and um, very determine on what you're doing and this is the part of the process that you're going to get negative feedback you're going to get rejections um, but in order to walk through this because none of us um, is stronger than all of us 
um, that means that you need to find your support group that actually encourage you and um, patch your back during the process and tell you to forget about the bad patches and you know, keep pulling until you actually get to the end line. So make sure that you have a very supportive group of friends or family or supervisor um, or colleagues who would actually help you uh, to get through the um, rough patches that you would organize in, um, you would in encounter in your research. Um, so this is some of the thing that I would really encourage all of students to do is to make sure that you have friends who are also passionate about the research and who share your enthusiasm about finding uh, the solution for uh, the most uh, troubling problems of our times. Now, uh, we have a quick um, quiz time. Um, I've been speaking for quite long uh, for now. Um, so let me give you a... a an opportunity to actually demonstrate what you have learned so far. But before that, I wanted to introduce some of the tools that um, you could use to make your English uh, better. Now, m some, some of the deal these tools are known and others are not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with the Grammarly, which is probably the most easiest tool um, that could you could actually use in your writing to um, remove the most common problems uh, from your um, research um, and it takes almost 70 or 80 percent of your grammatical mistakes out um, and I would encourage all of you to get a premium version of that um, because um, as you can see in the screen you can add it to different uh, browsers through a plugin uh, and you can see on the um, corner we have this green uh, button where you could actually use that anywhere you are you also have a word Microsoft Word plugin that you can um, check your grammar and your syntax uh, in Microsoft Word where you're actually writing the paper. Um, so that's um, one thing. And then the premium version actually tells you the tone of your language. So is it formal? Is it friendly? Are you being optimistic or are you going to be um, pessimistic? Uh, what kind of writing you're doing? It not only checks your grammar, it tells you about the tone of your um, language. Now, uh, you can integrate this tool in pretty much every software that you use. Um, you can also use that on social media with Medium, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, and you also can use it for your emails, Messenger, everywhere. Um, this are mostly papers. Um, it depends on the journal that you're publishing in. Some are more informal, some are formal. Um, you have to consult um, the ultimate guidelines for that, but in general, um, research um, is put forward in a very unemotional, uh, matter-of-fact, uh, um, scientific straight terms um, and you have to report your findings without any bias. So that would be the um, tone that's more appropriate for that. Um, now you have um, other things um, like um, you can add your um, tone and set style so the Grammarly actually uh, does it for you. Um, and then it all, you can also use um, help for their uh, proofreading services. Um, as we speak, we also have the um, business accounts, the shareable accounts for Grammarly. Um, you can contact Osama for one of these accounts. You can get a per month account. Um, I believe that's um, thousand per month. So you can use it for your uh, research um, while you're doing that. And you can use it for a couple of months or as long as you want. Now, uh, another tool that is specifically for writing, which is less known, and this is kind of a um, latest stone, um, that is a ref and write. Now, um, sorry, just give me a minute. Let me finish that and I'll address your point. Now, ref and write is a software that actually um, is um, very helpful for students who do not come from English speaking countries and English is not your first language. Um, so it has a Microsoft Word add-in uh, and what it does is that um, it gives you um, the syntax for a lot of um, portions of result. So I'm going to go ahead and actually show you how it works. I'll share the screen. So there you see my Microsoft Word. Um, does everyone see that? All right. 
Um, so once you've installed Ref and Write, what you see is that I have a pl plugin for Grammarly also here. So I can show you that. It tells you about correctness, clarity, engagement, delivery, everything else. Um, you can also adjust your goals for your writing. So if you're writing a research paper, you can select more formal tone. If you're writing a fiction book, um, you can select it a more informal and um, more relaxed version of um, writing. Now, uh, ref and write, um, this is how the interface looks like. So for example, if you're writing about the introduction section of a paper, uh, so what you can do is, uh, if you do not know the wording or if you don't know where to start, um, you can get different ideas from that. So you can go to the, oh, I think I had the trial version. But anyways, uh, what you can do is uh, you can go to um, the academic dashboard and it's going to give you um, different tools where to start. For example, uh, if you want to write about the introduction, you can write this has become a popular area for. Uh, it remains a popular method because of it. In recent years, a great interest has been shown in. So there are so many things that you could actually do with that. Now, one more thing you can do that is you can import all the research papers um, that you want to use in literature review. And it's going to scan all those papers and use the phrases from within these papers that you could use in your own paper. So it basically recycles um, all the information that you would uh, need for that. Um, you can also get your paper from different resources like OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, and other places like that. Uh, now, one more uh, thing that you can do is that they have different templates that you can use. I'm not going to do that, but you can uh, press um, play button on their YouTube intro and see what uh, features they offer for um, the Microsoft Word um, and what you can do to do that. Um, we also uh, you also have a free trial for I think that was 14 days. So you can do a free trial on your version uh, of Word and you can um, learn how it works. And if you're interested, let us know and we can get one for you also. I need to renew my own version also. Now, the final tool that we're going to be using uh, for rephrasing is that sometimes um, you would not know how to reword uh, a paper that you have done. Okay, before we actually go that, this was the one feature that I wanted to show you. For example, um, if you go to the introduction section, uh, I think ref and write is uh, lifetime. So um, that's the uh, plugin that you only have to buy uh, once. I'm going to double check it and if you uh, need that, uh, let me know and I'll let you know uh, if that's the lifetime version. So we have different uh, phrase templates. So if you select the introduction and so if you want to write about Im importance of um, topic, so you have different um, lines that you can actually help to get started. So this is a topic of pivotal importance or if this has become an issue of great impor importance recently due to, um, so these are some of the lines that can actually get you started. Sometimes what happens is that when you start writing and um, you're out of ideas and you know a little push or a little um, nudge um, in order to get started. So these are the lines that would actually help you report your findings. And since they've already been used in research papers, um, they're known to be acceptable uh, in academic journals. Um, now, you can also um, rephrase your writing um, through a software that's called Killboard. Uh, so for example, if you have a text that you want to write about um, and you don't know how to reword that because you certainly do not want uh, to plagiarize your information. So what you can do is you can uh, copy paste the text that you want to um, kill. And then there are different things that you can do. You can check it for fluency. Uh, it can improve the grammatical mistakes or you can use a standard mod, creative mod, and so many other things. So it also can flip the words. Um, so you can switch between the more accurate synonym or um, the less accurate one, but a different one also. So once you have done your text, so I've uh, put one sentence in here. So once you're done, you press kill it. And then it's going to um, give you options how to change that. So now you see that material posted or shared on website, blog, social networks, um, and the like may lack one or more of standard facts of publication. So it has changed the wording to posted or shared material 
on website blogs, social networks, and one or more of the standard publishing facts may lag the like. So it is actually rearrange the words, use different kind of synonyms. Uh, what you can do is you can press on individual words and change that also. So for instead of material, you could use product. Um, you could also use instead of publishing, you could write uh, if um, you're in print media, you can write print media. Um, that's an online tool, Zenup, so it does not matter if you're in Windows 10 or Linux or Mac. Um, and also this is um, 10,000 characters per kill. Um, so you, you can kill a lot more in the premium version. You also have a Microsoft Word add-in. So instead of coming on the website, you can kill your um, senators in Microsoft Word. You also have a Google Chrome extension um, and you also have two additional kill mods which are the um, creative and suggestive. So there's so many things you can do that. I was showing you the um, kill mod, how you can actually use kill. Um, and all of these software that I've been introducing um, that um, are available. Uh, so let me know um, if you want to um, use that. This is going to take your productivity to actually a whole new level. Uh, I personally use this software that I've shown you my Microsoft Word in which I have all these tools, um, the Grammarly um, and the Ref and Write and other tools also. Um, and it would be uh, really beneficial for a lot of people who do not um, actually possess um, English skills and that would be acceptable. And there's no um, harm in actually using the tools um, that would help you um, get to that part um, where you focus on your productivity um, and research question instead of focusing on your English grammar. Now, uh, finally, uh, Let's get to the quiz time. And I want um, any of you volunteers um, to show me um, your screen and actually uh, find uh, some research papers from Google Scholars. Um, and I want you to tell me how to sort those papers uh, for research papers that are published in the last five years and I want you to um, find f papers um, who have um, full text available. Uh, so who would like to share the screen and show me that? Um, so we have this final quiz for now, so just to make sure that everyone actually practically um, learns what's being taught. And by the way, these slides will also be available um, for you to review uh, so that you do not get lo um, lost off the track um, that we, what we have been teaching so far. So we don't have a volunteer today. I mean, we used to have Dr. Rabia last time um, and she was more active in um, sharing screen. Uh, Kuram, are you joining from your uh, phone or you are um, on your computer? I'm sure, Sarah, I can actually give you the demo of uh, Ref and Write also. Um, that's not a problem at all. Uh, most of the thing that you would want to know about that um, is uh, available on their website. So you can do a simple Google search and see m much of the features. Um, and is clearly shown on uh, how it works in Microsoft Word. Um, that's not a problem, but next time I can do that also. Um, is there anyone who's not on the phone? Okay, so I'll let you want to give it a shot. Um, I can help you out, no worries. I'm gonna go ahead and actually unmute you um, and you can share the screen. I can make you the moderator.
Okay, I think she mistakenly closed her zoom window. Let's wait for her. Uh, is there anyone else who wants to try? By the time she joins, let me actually go ahead and uh, share the screen for um, ref and rate. I think Sarah was asking about that. Um, so sorry, this is the web page where you could actually. I personally have not used um, Scholar Sara, so I don't know about that. Uh, but um, that's actually a good point. We can go ahead and see Scholar C. I've heard a lot about that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and give you the host. Uh, make sure you do not end the meeting or uh, lock yourself out this time. <laughs> um, yes, on you. No, not your video, the screen share. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Oh, no worries at all. Go to Google Scholar, find five papers that are Yes, and that will be the beginning. I want everyone else to pay close attention to what Sarah is doing. I'm sorry, Saliha is doing. Mm, not yet. Do you see the green button I call share screen in the middle? done that I think I had to enable the multiple participant can share simultaneously but that's been checked already I'm not sharing anything okay now it works Yeah, just search for any uh, 
paper of your field and you know make sure that um, all the research papers are um, in the previous la five years Do you have any reference? Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, do you have any reference managing software like EndNote or anything? All right, and then you organize it manually. It's quite precarious practice. I mean, because sometimes um, you forget to match the in-text citations uh, from the um, references or bibliography. All right, no problem. I mean, you can also look our at our um, qualitative analysis workshop um, in which we actually go through and note and there are different other tools because that automates a lot of um, citations um, and that makes a little lot easier to write a research paper. Um, but you know, whatever works for you. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, 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 that's true, that's right. okay all right Th thank you so much um that would be it uh, thank you so much for your sharing um sarah what exactly is hard and you have to make me the host again solia um yes i'm and i'm the host also thank you um and now uh and what kind of search strategies do you want to know, Sarah? We do not enter their full line as did by the participant. What do you mean by full line? Uh, do you mean that she wrote the full sen sentence instead of uh, keywords? Because um, you can do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, Google simply ignores the um, conjunctions, um, and then you know it focuses on the keywords and it searches for that. Uh, if you want to use your operators, you can do that. It's it's not a lethal uh, mistake, uh, so you can use whatever you want to do that. Um, there's um, there's some nice videos and tutorials online on how to use boolean operators for search. Um, if you want to do that, you can do that also. Uh, and then any, anyways, they have the filters on the left side here um, with the year um, and date and, and, thing. and you can also create alerts for the um, scientists that you're following. Uh, one more thing I have already requested to a lot of people that please make account on ResearchGate because there are so many papers, latest papers, and that are available here and in author profiles. Um, 
and you can ask them for their latest research also. Um, so this is my profile, and these are the people in my lab, um, and then um, the other people that I'm following that are in the same research field that I am. Uh, some of the papers that I've been working on, um, their authors are on the field, and um, you know it gives you different. Uh, research idea than what's being done in your research so you can you know follow the people that you're interested in you can ask them, them for their preprints and for their research um if you want uh that's a very good question um sarah actually auric id is actually the researcher id um that makes a database and record of all the publications that you have online so if you can go on or cid um, you can make your research ID with your email address and it's going to keep track of all your publications uh, once um, they're done. So I'm going to go ahead and actually show you that. So that's my email address um, for the ORC ID. And you can also uh, log in with your Google or Facebook address. Uh. So um, these are my um, accesses for different organizations for different journals um what i've already given you can also go to my uh, profile and find my papers um and my inbox messages and things like this and that's my uh, or cid so i recommend everyone to actually use that because many journals ask you uh, to submit their or cid so that their um, research um, is um, streamlined with your or cid Uh, cross-reference um, as a software or as a tool because cross-referencing is basically um, referring across this, across your and uh, multiple publications uh, to make sure that these publications cross site each other uh, for example if there's an organization who have published a special specific report um, it's going to be published on organizations page as well as the research papers so uh, people in on both places could actually um, track the paper or the company that uh, has published that uh, which website are you Ah, the cross reference is actually um, it gives you the uh, it allows you to read your information uh, with the visibility set to trusted parties. So that means, for example, if my paper is published um, um, on a partner website or on some article page, um, ORC ID is actually going to search for it and let me know that your paper is published there. Um, and that is the one that actually um, assigns the identifier for your research paper to that article and then it, it is tracked as yours uh, so you can search all your papers uh, with DOI and that's not something that I'm going to go deeper into that today um, because um, that's something we're going to be talking about tomorrow when we search uh, different journals for publications and their gu submission guidelines I think I've addressed that last time a little bit also and also in facebook groups um facebook live so session also last time sorry uh, and that's something we're going to be learning about in detail tomorrow so um, i'm going to um, let you go if uh, no one has any other question uh, and i know it's been a long session and you know there's a lot of information to take uh, it can become overwhelming and uh, people can get stressed and uh, this is why once we have the recording we're going to be uploading that very soon and you can access that and learn it on your pace um, do the hands-on training um, and uh, make sure that you repeat the steps that we have done um, today and use all the tools that we have used um, so that um, this becomes uh, of value for you I'm um, sorry we're going to be talking about this tomorrow so it's only the first day where we talked about the academic writing and research um, and the tools that you need tomorrow we'll actually be going to take this learning um, and 
put that into a real research paper um, how to format tables and things like this so uh, rest of the things will be tomorrow I uh, yes Salia this is how it normally works um, we are generally able to uh, get the recording out pretty soon um, so hopefully it's going to be there uh, tomorrow all right thank you so much everyone uh, it's been a very uh, beneficial session um, and I uh, hope to see you tomorrow and get ready for uh, the information that would actually um, be able to help you in your research journey. Thank you so much.